Hi, this is Elliot Eisenberg of Graphs and Laughs here to catch you up to date on the latest in residential sales data for Hillsborough County. Single fam home prices are up 2%, not a great deal, but they're still up and multifam's up 10%, pretty strong on the multifam side. If you look at uh, sales activity, it's down about 23% on the single fam side and 20 on the multifam side, clearly a sign of a weakening market. Similarly, if you look at sales price as a function of list price, they're down about 4.5% on the single fam side and closer to 4% on the multifam side. Again, a sign of a weakening, but not weak market because these are still at 95, 96% of original listing price. If you look at pending sales activity, it's down about 6.5% on single fam and just 2% on the multifam. So again, multifam is doing a skosh better than the single fam side. And if you look at available inventory, it's up about 150% on the single fam side and about 200% on the multifam side. Yes, those are very large percentages, but only because inventory was starved a year ago. Turning our attention to Pasco County, home price appreciation continues there too and a little bit stronger up about 4% on the single fam side and closer to 17% on the multifam side, a very, very strong number. Sales activity is down about six, six and a half percent on the single fam side, but up a staggering almost 40% on the multifam side, far and away the highest price appreciation of any type of product in any of the three counties. The sales price to list price is down by about 4.8% on the single fam, a little less, 3.5% on the multifam side. But again, at 95 on the single fam side and closer to 97 on the multifam side, prices, this is still a strong market, but clearly one that's weakening. If you look at future sales, pending sales activity, up 3.6% on the single fam side and a very strong, almost 30% on the multifam side. So multifam's a little stronger than single fam. And Pasco really seems to be doing pretty well, relatively well, compared to both Hillsborough and Pinellas counties. If you look at inventories, they're up about 180% on the single fam side and closer to almost 250% on the multifam. Again, remember, these are very low, uh, big increases because inventories were very, very low a year ago. Now turning our attention to Pinellas County, single fam home prices rose a decent 5% and multifam rose a very strong 11%, good numbers. If you look at sales activity, it's down about 25% in both the single and multifam sides of the market. If you look at sales price as a function of list price, it's down 5% on the single fam side, a little bit less on the multifam side, but in both cases, these are in the 95, 96, 97% of list price area. So this is still, these are pretty good numbers. If you look at pending sales activity, it's down 6% on the single fam side and a more noticeable 20% decline on the multifam side. But remember that multifam home prices are still rising at 11%. Lastly, if you look at inventory, it's up about 125% on the single fam side and 190, almost 200% on the multifam side. But again, as I've mentioned in other videos, this is primarily because inventory was staggeringly starved a year ago when Omicron was with us. Turning our attention now to the national economy, this. The second half of 2022 was very good. We had GDP growth well above trend, and it looks like we're gonna have GDP growth well above trend in the first quarter of 23. Moreover, unemployment remains very, very low, near 50, 55 year lows. And as a result of this, inflation isn't falling fast enough. This combination of good GDP growth, low unemployment and inflation that's too high is causing the Fed to be very antsy. And as a result of that, in their just concluded late March meeting, despite the fact that we have a bit of a banking fiasco crisis on our hands, primarily because of the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, the Fed still raised rates a quarter point. That was a signal by the Fed to markets that they're most concerned about inflation above and beyond the banking problems, which they have fixed with other tools at their disposal. I suspect that because GDP remains strong and unemployment is low and inflation is not falling fast enough, the Fed will raise rates one more time. It may be at their May meeting, it may be at their June meeting, but at that point they'll stop and, and assess what's going on. At this point, the Fed's given us no indication that they're prepared to lower short-term rates, the Fed funds rate, 
before the end of 23. What's important to point out to buyers and sellers is that this has relatively little impact in the short run, at least on home interest rates. Interest rates at the long end of the yield curve, which influence home, home mortgage rates, haven't done much of anything. They have not gone up in sympathy because short rates have. This is important to point out going forward. What I am most particularly concerned about going forward is in fact a recession likelihoods. I've been talking about it for quite some time. I think this recent mini banking bust that we experienced will exacerbate things in that direction a little bit more. And I suspect that the recession comes in the third quarter of this year.